documenting business requirement is one of the important tasks for a functional consultant. So for a functional consultant, ability to document business requirement is one of the important tasks. <coughs> now, how do we document business requirement? Business requirement primarily is written in English. You just write pretty plain in English. Okay, I need this, blah, 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 there's that. And you're writing it in, in, in English text. In, business requirements are not written in Greek and Latin. They are written in plain English. Then another thing is business requirements also prioritize. So we put a priority. We put a criticality, we put a complexity. That is also fairly common in which we prioritize business requirement. We uh, define which business requirement is critical, which is less critical, which is more critical. And then we define complexity. Which requirement is more complex, least complex, meet complex, and all that. So complexity. Priority. Criticality, complexity. Then we define the project scope. Project scope means all the business requirements which you have captured. What all would be included? Because not all business requirements can be done together. So among all business requirements which we have, which business requirement we will do first, which you will do second, and then we will do another one, another one, another one, another one. That is what? That is what we gather the business requirement. That is where the business requirement come into the picture. And then we require the scope. Now, I would like you guys to make a note of the second paragraph. Three techniques help business user discover their need for the new system. Business process automation, business process improvement, business process reengineering. Make a note of that. Make a note of that statement, please. Make a note, please. Now, there are three techniques to discover the business need for the new system. One, business process automation, second 
business process improvement third business process reengineering let us understand three of them let us understand three of them so basic process of analysis or determining business requirement the always approach is to determine the current state determine as is determine current state business requirements determine what is currently taking place as is understand as is current state the second is while gathering the business requirement the next thing which you do we also determine what is going on and what will happen or what needed to happen in the future state what need to happen in the future state so current state and future state then we also have now future state is what future state is basically considering current plus considering improvement and that become future state future state is nothing but current state plus improvements which you are looking for that become future state now when we talk about the bpa bpi bpr business process automation business process improvement business process reengineering business process automation involve small changes business process improvement involve moderate changes business process reengineering involve significant changes small change moderate change significant change i would like you guys to make a note of these three statement a small change moderate change and significant change make a note of that when we talk about business process automation we are talking about small changes in the current state when we are talking about business process improvement we are talking about moderate change and in case of business process reengineering we are talking about significant changes that is the differentiation between business process automation business process improvement and business process reengineering first we going to talk about business process automation business process automation as the name suggest idea is to automate the processes 
then by automating the process we would be acquiring more with more efficiency for the business users more efficiency for business users that is the if you say why you want to automate automation um, automation happens and the primary purpose of uh, automation is to bring effectiveness bring efficiency saving time reducing errors making things faster and overall being more efficient that is the purpose of business process automation understanding the edge system we must understand what is edge system now when we understand the current system three there are three bullet point extensive information gathering of the current state how do we how are we doing currently that you gather multiple ways means you read current state document you ask questions if they have a current state system you look into it check it verify yourself process modeling process modeling means making a current state process diagram current state process diagram is actual process diagram of the current state and then we have data modeling data modeling basically means how we can enter manage maintain data that is the data modeling so process modeling and we also have a data modeling we have both and we work on both data modeling and also process modeling process modeling tells me how the process should be maintained data modeling takes about how data should be maintained then we identify the improvement <clears throat> so in the current state process we identify the improvement we identify that how the current state process can be would be and should be make better now let me tell you one more thing though looking at the current state business process improvement is an important part is an important part of bringing efficiency to the system that is important part of bringing efficiency to the system and develop feature state and eventually we develop feature state process so current state and then we attend feature state from the current state <clears throat> identifying improvement in edges i would like you guys to make a note of these two bullet points so please make a note of these two bullet points
improvement tend to be small and incremental really improvement we really find improvement with a significant business value with a significant business value that's important statement really with really find improvement with a significant business value so when we are finding improvements these improvements are gradual these improvements are small these improvements are not significant these improvements are not okay. so we need to understand in process in the business process automation improvements are gradual incremental and they are not significantly different another thing is root cause analysis once we find out the problem we find out the issues that why certain issue is happening in that case we need to do a root cause analysis which uh, in that case we need to find out why this problem is taking place and how that problem can be improved and what we need to do to change that what we need to do to improve that that is another important parameter there is another important function root cause analysis identifying understanding the problem now we are talking about the next thing which is business process improvements automation business process improvement the goal of business process improvement is efficiency and effectiveness efficiency and effectiveness so along with efficiency we have also added a new word that is called effectiveness efficiency and effectiveness efficiency and effectiveness in understand the as a system again we identify current state we do process modeling we do data modeling we do certain an analyze like duration analysis how long this process takes end to end cycle is 3 days how much time it take to enter the order and deliver two days how much time it take to get an order to get the cash five days duration analysis the another one is we talk about in uh, activity based costing in activity based costing basically we are working in through different activities different activity basically means um that we are verifying a process and divided that process into individual activity so we have process and the process we have a each of activity and we are doing activity till the end okay then develop the concept for the to be state for the future state so what we want to do in the future state how the future state will look like and what is our goal for the future state what our expectation for the future state so we'll talk about that as well 
So we have current state, and we also have feature state, and we identify them in this fashion. And then that is the goal of business process improvements. Now, when we th when we talk about uh, duration analysis, I would like you guys to make a note of these two bullet points. Oops. Make a note of these two statements. Calculate the time needed for each process system and they calculate the time which is needed for overall process. Time which is needed for overall process. So we look at both. Calculate the overall time. Now we have to see potential solution. Pay attention. Now if, if we have a more time, a process is taking longer duration, how can we change it? What can we do? How can we minimize and update our process automation. What can be done to change that? In order to do the process automation, we can do two step potential solution. Make a note of that process integration and parallelization. and parallelization. Process integration and parallelization. Process integration change the process to user fewer people. So don't have don't involve ten people, involve seven. Make uh, certain process steps being integrated in one other process integration. removing certain steps getting less of people involved in the into the end-to-end -end process parallelization means certain process steps are being done in parallel being done simultaneously that is an example of parallelization so rather than we doing into sequence we do certain steps parallelly and by doing those process step parallelly we are doing the automation in them Another one is activity-based costing. Make a note of this term first and foremost. Activity-based costing. Activity-based costing. 
activity based costing. Calculate the cost of each process step. Activity based cost. When we talk about a process, process is consists of process steps and each step has an activity and each activity has a cost and that cost could be direct or indirect now what is the example of a direct indirect cost direct cost basically means I have an individual working taking care of a process step the cost of that person is a direct cost indirect cost basically means which is not the cost of a person involved directly but that is the cost of a person which is working on this indirectly means you have a peon in the office you have a you have a gatekeeper he is not doing process but he is also being involved you have a manager he doesn't do much but he is also involved most managers doesn't do Make a note of that activity based costing. Now we are talking the benchmarking. Make a note of this statement, please. Oops, benchmarking. Benchmarking. What is the benchmarking? benchmarking make a note of that Benchmarking is comparing. In benchmarking, we are taking process of uh, one process and comparing how my computer is doing. That is an example of a benchmarking. That is what benchmarking means. You can do uh, informal or formally. Informal basically means you are asking opinion, we are asking view. It is informal. You can do formal 
where you are you know involving industry experts and doing formal benchmarking okay. now the next one is business process engineering business process reengineering in case of business process reengineering we are basically changing and i would like you guys to make a note of here radical redesign of business processes make a note of that Re business process engineering basically mean the radical redesign of the business process please make a note of that statement radical redesign of business processes in that case business processes are fundamentally changed in this case business processes are fundamentally redesigned fundamental redesign of the processes that we do in case of business process reengineering in that uh, we don't care too much about what is we are doing in currently we do process modeling data modeling we are basically and one of the thing which outcome analysis activity elimination activity elimination that basically means that uh, because this is a drastic change in a, in 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 a way we do the process so that basically means we might remove the entire process we might remove the entire process step and we might remove the activity in the process and by removing the process by removing the process step and by removing the activity in the process we can make a fundamental change in the process and that is how the change in the fundamental change in the business processes are being conducted and that is where the important point come into the picture radical redesign of business processes okay. outcome analysis technology analysis activity analysis make a note of these three statement outcome analysis technical analysis and process and element now when say technical analysis means i am using a software i am using a technology and i might remove this technology completely we do not require that technology we remove it we completely remove the technology and then develop a completely feature state design so in case of business process engineering when we do the feature state feature state is that is drastically dramatically and could be completely different than the current state in case of business process engineering outcome analysis outcome analysis make a note of the, these two bullet points consider desirable outcome from customer perspective customer perspective when we are redesigning the process why do we do that what could be the derivatives what could be the point of interest what could be the perspective that we would be designing a process why we would do that what could be the reason what could be the reason what is the reason
what could be the region? And the region could be to enhance customer expectations, to, rem to enhance customer experience. In, in the case of process, business process engineering, enhancing customer experience, enhancing and making customer expectations better with our product and services is one of the most important parameter of designing, defining and doing the business process engineering. Remember, you do not change, you do not need to change unless there are very valid reasons to change. And unless those reasons are there, we should rather not change. It's not a fashion. Sometime and in most cases, Changes are a necessity. Changes are driven from the customer experiences towards our product, services and company. And that is one of the important aspects to understand. That is one of the important aspects to understand. Technology analysis, outcome analysis, technology analysis. Let us understand technology an uh, analysis. Now, in case of technology analysis, that's another important parameter. It means you would like to analyze how this technology is relevant for us. Analyze, list important and interesting technologies. list important and interesting technologies. Remember, if I'm planning to do business process engineering, if I'm trying to make a process change, how do we really do it? It's not that you come in the morning and say, well, you know, starting tomorrow, this is how we will do it. You can say it, but it's not going to happen. process does not get changed because we are asking for it. Process must only be changed and can only be changed if there is a reason, there is a method and there is a process to change a process. And technology are the strongest enabler of better processes. Why people use technology in a business domain? Why, what, what, what does all these different technologies do? One of the very important expectations of all these different technologies is that these technologies make our experiences better. These technologies enable a better process. So let us say I want to change a process, wonderful, but how will you really change it? That change in the business process is, takes place by changing the technology. Activity and evaluation. Another thing is activity and evaluation. Activity elimination.
activity annihilation, elimination. So how we eliminate an activity? An activity could be eliminated. So we analyze, okay, we have activity 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. And out of these 10, these 3 and 4 we can do. These 5 and 6 we can merge. 7 and 8 we can do parallelly. So by doing that, we can reduce the time cycle by half. How do we, so let me repeat, in the business, as I mentioned in the beginning, for a business analyst, their ability to capture business requirements is very important. Business requirement gathering is one of the important part of a business analyst's role and responsibility. That is important. Okay. The second is, those business requirements, when we are gathering, we are doing it as this model and we are doing it to be model. In the as is and to be, as is means current state, we analyze current processes, we ask questions, we read current documents, and by all these different methods, we collect the current state requirement, we do the process modeling, we do the data modeling. Process modeling is nothing but creating a process flow diagram. Data modeling is nothing but creating a process flow, how do we create and capture data. Now, in the future model, that is what we are stuck. Then when we are saying future model, what do you mean by the future model? Future model basically, we talked about three things, business process automation, business process improvement, and business process re-engineering. Business process automation bring efficiency. Business process improvement bring efficiency and effectiveness. And business process re-engineering it's a drastic, dramatic change in the current state processes. It's a drastic and dramatic change in the current state processes. That is what the business process improvement, business process automation, and business process reengineering does. And we also do benchmarking. Benchmarking basically allows us to benchmark of a process and benchmarking of the process basically allow us to measure how we are doing in comparison to our competitiveness, in comparison to our similar industry and a company which is far better than us. How are they doing and what we can learn from their experience. Business process engineering are not recommended in every situation. It's not done in every situation. Like everything else in the life, process change are also gradual. Even in SAP world, business process changes the new business process recommendations are gradual. And that is most recommended. You don't want to make wholesale changes and make your drastic processes completely go haywire. You never do that. You will never recommend doing that. So that is what I want to talk to you today. It's one o'clock. 
and uh, I thank you, uh, all of you, please be safe and uh, take care of yourself, make sure you're not, uh, um, you know, getting too much in cold and all that, and um, I will uh, talk to you guys tomorrow again at 12 o'clock. Uh, more than likely, I will be there in office uh, myself tomorrow and uh, possibly we'll do class in person. But please be safe. Thanks and uh, talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Take care.